like we'll talk later about C6 is going to be wrist extension. All right, so again, if you just remember, this is C6 like this. C5 is going to be elbow flexion. C6 is going to be wrist extension. It's going to be the dermatome right here. But that's for the upcoming weeks. So dermatome. You mean the myotome? Yeah, I was, yeah, myotome, okay. yeah. But I mean, we're doing them together. So if you think of this as C6, this is going to be the dermatome part. Wrist extension is going to be the myotome, and elbow flexion is the myotome. And then C7 is going to be like this, wrist flexion, elbow extension. Both dermatomes are both motor or antithetical? No, no, dermatomes are skin, myotomes are, are motor. We'll kind of mix them up together. So, so skin is sensory only. Dermatomes are, are the, the pattern on the skin that has to do with sensory mm -hmm. input. So if you have a certain nerve root that's affected, it's going to have sensory issues on that dermatome. Mm -hmm. But then muscles that are affected are going to be the myotomes. Mm -hmm. But then you also have something that's called like sclerotomes, but that's something different. When you talk about like deep uh, vessel pain or something like certain areas will radiate pain like in, deep into the shoulder and things like that. But that's don't worry about that for right now. Let's see. So we'll do this. We'll just do this motor relay. Talk about upper motor neuron and lower motor neuron. And then we'll take a break. And we'll do the pathologic reflexes. And then we'll probably have time to kind of review some of this stuff and go over it. Again. All right, so now we talked about how many uh, motor, how many nerve fibers do we have for a motor? Two. Two. Uh -huh. okay. So you have upper motor neuron, lower motor neuron. So you have this motor relay. So it starts in this cerebral cortex. It has one, the first motor neuron is going to go down to the level of the spinal cord, usually going to be in the ventral horn or the anterior horn. Then it's going to synapse to the lower motor neuron, which crosses and goes out to the muscle. So again, like we mentioned, 90% of the fibers are going to cross at the pyramidal decussation in the medulla oblongata and then descend on the opposite side. And then the other ones that haven't crossed are going to cross at the level of the spinal cord. And then the upper motor neuron is going to be going to the ventral horn. And then that's where you go from the upper motor neuron to the lower motor. So the upper motor neuron synapses with the lower motor in the anterior or ventral horn. And then the lower motor neuron is going to exit the spinal cord, and of course it's going to be in the ventral uh, nerve, the ventral root, and then it's going to go down to the muscle. I'm sorry, the Same thing. Okay. Ventral is anterior, dorsal is posterior. Sorry. So now, when you're talking about upper motor neurons, it's going to be things like we talked about before, like it could be a stroke, something that happens in the brain, or in the spinal cord itself. Anywhere as long as it's before the actual anterior horn of the spinal cord. So everything before that snaps is going to be upper motor neuron lesion. Anything after that snaps is going to be lower motor neuron lesion. Okay. And then lower motor neurons are primarily going to be peripheral nerves, although technically when it exits the spinal cord, it's a nerve root, and those have numbers. And then shortly after that, it's going to become a peripheral nerve. Right. So lower motor neurons is going to be anywhere from the anterior horn of the spinal cord to anywhere to the end of the muscle. Right. Not the end of the muscle, but the end of the nerve that goes into the muscle. <coughs> And then when you have upper motor neuron 
lesion, you're going to have spastic paralysis. And I think I mentioned that before. And the reason is this, is that the upper motor neuron sends an impulse to the lower motor neuron that decreases the signal. So it regulates or depresses the signal going to the lower motor neuron. So if you lose that, there's nothing to keep the lower motor neuron in check. So the lower motor neuron is still sending out its impulses and it's not reduced by the upper motor neuron. So that's when you end up with the, like the spastic process like this. Like you see people with cerebral palsy, you know, they, this kind of thing where they can't move their muscles. So it's spastic paralysis. And they're not so much going to have the muscle atrophy. And they don't really have the circulation of fibrillations. And then you have the Babinski's reflex, which is what we're going to go over in a little while. We'll talk about the pathologic reflex. And then again, because you don't have that decreased control to the lower motor neuron from the upper, you're going to have increased reflexes. So you have spastic paralysis, and then you have hyperreflexes. So like 3 plus, 4 plus, 5 plus. Circulation and fibrillations are like muscles, kind of like twitches, and like a spasm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Spasm would be like the whole muscle's tight, okay? Fibrillations and circulations are like muscles that are twitching and eating. Yeah. And then clonus, what that is, is it's usually done on the, on the foot. Like if you suddenly uh, dorsiflex the foot at the ankle, then it's going to go like that. It's going to go back and forth. Okay. So you have an ankle clonus where you suddenly uh, dorsiflex the foot, it's going to shake back and forth. Is that the only time that would be present, or are there other uh, Yeah, I think there'd be other, other situations, but that's one that's significant. Uh, well, yeah. so, in the motor neurons, there is no uh, muscle atrophy at all? I mean, there's nothing that you can see? Like, in the um, I wouldn't expect them to, you know, look like a body matter, yeah. but it's not going to be as significant like with this. <coughs> Because you know they're not they're not using their muscles, so they're not going to have big bulked up beefy muscles. But compared to lower motor neurons, you're going to see more muscle atrophy with that. So again, now we're talking about lower motor neurons. So you're going to have flaccid paralysis. <coughs> something hot, your arm is going to move away. So the lower <coughs> motor neuron is more of an active firing impulse that's going to be ready to, to make the muscle move. Okay? Whereas the upper motor neuron is something that's going to have more of a controlling effect on it. Okay? So if you have upper motor neuron lesions, you're not going to have that reducing or more common effect to the um, neuron. So it's going to have those, those just, it's going to have like like a short circuit or something, so all of a sudden there's having impulses being sent to those muscles, and then you're going to get the circulation and fibrillation and things like that. So it's lack of like inhibitory receptors? Yeah. yeah. That's the word that I was looking for, inhibitory effect. Yes. <laughs> 